Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the Live Well channel. So excited that you're joining us for this conversation with Lacey Alexander. Before we get into that, go ahead and hit subscribe if you don't want to miss anything from us. Hit the like button if you like this specific conversation that we have today and the bell if you want to get notified for future uploads. So today we're going to be talking about something that is so integral to our own wellness that we don't talk about enough, and that is how you define success. So I don't want to give away anything, no spoilers here. So keep watching if you want to find out some tips and get some guidance on how to even start doing that for yourself. Let's get into it. All right, everybody. Um, we are excited to have Lacey Alexander here. I'm so looking forward to this conversation because this is definitely one of the hangups that I had uh, coming up through my, uh, my own professional career. Um, before we get into that, though, let's learn a little bit about Lacey. So Lacey is the CEO and founder of Creative Solutions A to Z. She's a leadership trainer. She's a coach and she is a curriculum designer. Uh, but let's hear a little bit more from Lacey. Over to you. Hi, Mary. Thanks for inviting me on your show. I'm excited for this conversation. Uh, so as you said, I'm a, a, a leadership trainer, coach, and curriculum designer, and most of my work focuses on personal and professional growth. I feel like leadership is a skill that helps people just be better human beings. And I do work in the resilience space and then coaching people, coaching people to, to be their best selves. And I partner with a, a lot of different organizations. I've had the fortune to, um, to go out and do resilience training for healthcare here in New Jersey, especially after these last few years and all the hardships that they've faced or do uh, intercultural communication or diversity training with major companies. And I partner a lot with Rutgers University and um, get to have an impact in um, helping people grow. Um, very cool. So I uh, got to know Lacey a little bit. Oh my goodness. I don't even know when it was we were in person in DC. It's like a time warp. <laughs> yeah, it was July because I flew in from Barbados the night before and then drove to DC. <laughs> July. Okay. Wow. That seems like a long time ago. Um, but that's where we first met and definitely have just been enamored with Lacey. I think I'm so inspired by everything you're doing. Um, the space in which you work with leadership development and training, um, that what I feel like you bring to that is the focus on the personal side of things, on that leader of self first, and then watching that once you kind of dive into it and master it, if you will, it trickling over into every other aspect of your leadership journey. Um, so is that fair to say that? <laughs> about you. No, I think that's a phenomenal summary. That's exactly <laughs> what my goal is, right? To help people to figure themselves out so that they can be their best leaders uh, and selves, right? You're a good partner, a parent, all of these things whenever you know yourself and you grow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so I definitely... I, I see that in you and I feel that from you. And although our conversation could branch off to probably an infinite amount of topics, um, today I really wanted to hit home with you and to kind of talk about what uh, success and defining success for yourself looks like and why that's so critical to our own well being. Um, this is sort of a niche topic, but it's so, so important because I just, you know, quickly personal testimony have found that. I based all of my goals in my professional career based on what other people thought I should do or what was the next point of trajectory that I should take um, instead of defining that for myself. So talk to us a little bit about what defining success for yourself looks like and, and why it's important. Yeah, my focus around defining success was a personal journey as well. And when, when I was growing through my career, you know, you carry a lot of stress or expectations, living other people's dreams. And when you take that time to step back and define success, right? The, the definition of success is the attainment of wealth, position, honors, or the like. Mm -hmm. But what does that even mean to you? What does wealth mean to you? What does, um, what position is important to you? And until you figure that out, you're just chasing this impossible dream, chasing other people's dreams. You know, the 2.5 kids in the white picket fence. Is that even what you want? Yeah. And for my journey in particular, figuring out success 
boosted my confidence majorly. I was able to set boundaries and create priorities and continue to grow, but be intentional and deliberate about it. And so I've carried that over into my coaching practice in particular, because 100% of my clients have talked about confidence issues, have talked about uh, work-life balance. uh, And when I'm teaching, this comes up consistently. And it's, it's centered around this goal or chasing this far off dream, but what does that dream mean to you? Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. I think, well, you bring up probably one of the most common things I hear uh, both from my mouth and in discussion with other people. And that's the work-life balance and that overwhelm that kind of robs us from the time to dive into what the answers are to these questions. You know, I don't know if that is, if that's making sense as I say it, but I know for me, it was, I know, I don't know. That was like, even in my, in my trailer for the live well channel, I say all that elusive balance, like that, where is it? How do we find that? Because I feel like when you can quiet some things around you, that's when you can start answering the questions of what does wealth look like? What does success look like? What, where am I pulled? I think that's another one. Where am I pulled towards, you know, but um, if we're in survival mode, that's hard to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and honestly, people are always going to have opinions. They're going to have spectators are plentiful. Like you can find spectators with opinions everywhere. And when you can define success, you can make those choices or focus your attention guilt-free. Uh, one, I'd like to share this personal example that uh, once I did define success, you know, being a mom and working and, and loving your career and being pulled in those directions and the guilt is endless. Um, you know, how can you leave your kids for that long? Or how can you leave work? It's just nonstop uh, guilt. And when I was able to define success, I was able to focus my intentions and do well in my career, but also be fine when I say, hey, I'm leaving on Tuesdays and Thursdays to take my kids to ballet because I want to be there and I want to experience it. And I had this this experience that I share that um, one of my um, direct reports called one day and said, you know, are you in the office? And I was like, oh, no, I'm headed to ballet and with my youngest. And they were like, oh, jokingly. And we had a good rapport, so don't judge him. <laughs> he said, oh, must be nice to leave before eight o'clock. Now, mind you, in his office was a single father and another person who was about to have a baby, another soon-to-be father. And I said, oh, okay, because I was on speakerphone. I'll call you right back. So I called him back and I said, you know, it's not about me. You didn't offend me, but what message did you just send to them? And if our work is done, you know, and I have 200 people and five different activities and you're running one of those activities with 20 something people, and you feel that you have to stay till eight o'clock, then maybe we need to talk about time management. And to this day, we're still friends. It changed his life. That conversation changed his life, but it, it was this expectation that he had grown up with that you, you show up and you're there for all hours just to look like you're busy. And it wasn't even functional. He wasn't, he wasn't that efficient or effective. So um, I think that for me, where I would have second guessed myself before reclaiming my time and prioritizing my family or prioritizing me and my self-care, I was able to do that guilt-free. Yeah, I, that's, that is exactly the the place I want all of us to get is that self-assurance of I I'm so laser focused on what I'm supposed to be doing or how I've defined success for myself and my family that the distractions of people's perceptions or comments don't affect me. In fact, what it does, per your example, is it turns it into an opportunity for a meaningful conversation. You know, instead of the uh, being offended or being upset, because what happens is I would put up the defense if someone challenged what I was already insecure about. So I I already feel bad that I'm away from my kids. I already feel bad that I left 
work early to go spend time with my kids. So either way, I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't. And so the moment you draw attention to that and I haven't done the work yet, I'm insecure about it. That's a, that's a recipe for conflict, you know? Yes. And, and I'm not a very confrontational type of person where like, I won't, my, my nature isn't to bite back. My nature is to beat myself up. Mm. So then I'll go and I'll go down a spiral and self-loathe and that's no good for anybody. <laughs> so vicious cycle, right? Yes. And you're not alone in that though. Many people deal with that. Either they are angry or they are beating themselves up. And then, then you're stressed out. You're not taken care of. And when you are at either place as a parent, as a, as a person at work, you're not your best because you're operating out of survival, as you said. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. So, so when you, we, you know, it's really important for us to have clarity on what all of those things for our life mean, but specifically when we say um, defining success, what do you think is a barrier to us? I know we talked about the overwhelm, but what else it could be a barrier for us to um, even realizing we haven't defined success for ourselves, you know? Oh, I've done a lot of research around this and, and people don't necessarily take the time to reflect on how much society's expectations of us put these uh, imaginary pressures Mm -hmm. on us to succeed or not succeed, or, you know, it, it can be cultural, it can be our family, it can be work, school, society's expectation of women's roles in some instances. Mm -hmm. All of that creates these false expectations of who we're supposed to be by everybody else's definition. And we haven't taken a step back to say, one, how all of those expectations have weighed on us, but two, what are our own expectations for our life? Yeah. And what, so when we, when we start to do that, like I, I'll get, I want to give an example because I feel like it was such a revelation for me and it broke open so many doors and, and opportunities. Um, so I was reading a book when, when I uh, had left my last job, it was important for me to dive into literature of variety, just a variety of literature. It was not just one particular genre. So I picked up a book. It was, I think this book was called, I don't want to mislabel, but the secrets of the millionaire mind. I think it was a very popular book. Um, but I decided to read it and I've in my past, I've never been necessarily motivated by money, but you know, I always felt like I didn't quite have enough (laughs) of it. Um, so I was like, let me learn about this. Well, turns out per the book, he talks about something called a money blueprint. And it's something that we've sort of ingrained in our brain since very young. And it's just this thing that we have surrounding money. And I was shocked because this is what I gleaned from this, um, this experience. When I was younger, I, I came from a, a class of family that always had what we needed, not so much everything we wanted. And so um, we weren't what you would consider wealthy. Uh, some people might not consider wealthy, um, but I remember growing up in, in in the environment and having negative connotation around wealthy people and rich people. And it would be like these um, kind of backhanded or, or comments, not really backhanded, but comments about greed and selfishness. And I remember my temperament, you know, as I am, that being so what I did not want to be defined as. Like, I never wanted to be seen as selfish, greedy, none of those things. And so I sort of created my own money blueprint of just having enough, just enough to get by. And then I realized as I was doing all of this reflection for myself, how that was stifling what one of my main life's mission and goal is, and that is to give back through generosity. I can't give back as much as I want if I don't have. So I kind of broke open the doors for myself to say, no, 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 this isn't how I view this anymore. Because number one, that stereotype was completely false and unnecessary, right? But that's just, that's just what I was being told. Um, And so the parallel to that for me is what you said, culturally, how we're raised, what conversations are we having at home? And how is that shaping how we view the world and how we view success? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even just through your example there, what I'm hearing is how it relates to what you value and you value helping other people, right? Because there's steps to this, but I think that that foundational awareness of what is important to you helps you then define success. Mm 
So you're not living someone else's dream or level of wealth or not wanting to have that level of wealth because then you know what you value and why you value it and you can be intentional about it. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what do you think that like people can do to, I don't even know how to frame this question, but sort of um, identify, are they even on the pathway to how they want to define success? Like what are some, some first ground level steps people could take to even say, am I on the pathway that I'm defining or for myself? Mm -hmm. You know, I talk a lot about purpose and I have this little wheel that I, that I use and share, but for me, the first step is, is values, defining your values and why and understanding. And so for me, I share that my values are freedom, um, continual learning and helping people. And why is that important for me to know is that freedom to me means the ability to make decisions in my life based off what's best for me and my family and having the ability to be present and to show up and not have to answer to people. That's number one. Um, and you, you know, people may say like family's not even in your priorities, but it's infused in every bit of it. That freedom is what allows me to be there at the bus stop in the morning and be there at the bus stop in the afternoon. Most days yes. be there, be the room mom and do those things and still do what I'm very passionate about. Yeah. And then learning, you know, I just love, I love learning. I research for fun. And why is that important? Because it continues to open new doors for me and how I can then help people. Learning is also important to me because where I come from, I'm the first one that graduated high school. And that was um, for, I think I may be the first one that has a master's degree and, and some extended family. And for me, I wanted to set the example to my kids that you can do anything. There's the sky's the limit. So I've, push myself to do things. And it's, it's not to brag, but it was for them, like doing um, my coaching program at Rutgers. And then, and then that opportunity introduced me to this amazing group of people that now I get to partner with or pushing myself because my oldest used to want to go to Harvard. So I got a, a cert certification there. It's not because of the prestige for me, it was showing them that, you know, the sky's the limit. And if, if mommy can do it, you can do what it is that you want to do and you define what it is that you want to do. Yes. Um, and, and then, and, you know, making that difference for people. And yeah. And I, well, I just wanted to add on to that too, for the, the discussion with the children. I'm so grateful for the discussion, the, the things that I have uh, immersed myself in to be able to learn and then to be able to communicate that. And also having them watch us on the journey, I think mm -hmm. is so rewarding, you know, I, and I don't, um, you know, I guess sort of age appropriate to the degree of which the, the, the situation is at home, but I've also allowed the kids to see the good, the bad, the seemingly good, the seemingly bad, and to watch it play out. And how does this look when you uh, reassess, you know, you take a second thing, thing go the way you want it, you reassess, um, you know, that's why I don't really uh, label so much the, the business that I had closed I don't, I don't think it's a failure. I learned so much from that. It was probably the most expensive <laughs> immersion of actually like a tactile learning experience, but, but it was, I don't consider that a failure. I don't consider anything a failure, you know, because we're doing it, we're trying. So I love that you said that and just that, cause you're absolutely right. They're seeing it and they will embody that, you know? Yeah, and then they won't get locked in because words and success is important to me is uh, you've read the alchemist mm -hmm. um, in that book one thing that really stood out to me and it's not a spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't read it that should because it's a life-changing book in my opinion is this this part of the book where they're looking at this baker and he's going through the motions of life and when um the character is, is like, you know, well, he seems fine. Basically, I'm, I'm super summarizing this part, but it's like, he seems fine, but he's just going through the motions. He played it safe and he got stuck in that routine and he's roof over his head, providing for his family. And, you know, it's just enough. Like what you talked about earlier, it's just enough, but he's not doing what he's meant to do. And over time, we start to silence those inner voices that are telling us that there's something else out there. So you're setting that example that if you go and you're in something, it's okay to pivot. It's okay to shift and, and really learn what you needed to, and then 
move on and be who you're supposed to be. Yes. Oh my goodness. That I just, do you ever just sometimes sit in gratitude that you have this awareness? Like I truly am so grateful. And that's why the work you do and the work that I do, like, I just feel so grateful to be having these discussions because I want everyone to realize that sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And you might've played it safe and you might have this little tingle tug that says, maybe I should be doing something else. But like you said, we silenced that based on all the demands around us, but to give yourself just don't even, you don't even have to do anything that costs money or even a lot of time, but just maybe changing the narrative in your head, Mm -hmm. you know, to something more positive or something that could lean you into figuring out what that thing is. Um, for me, my big one is sitting in the silence. You know, I just afford myself five minutes a day to just sit quiet and allow whatever, you know, whatever I need to hear, whatever I need to think about just happen. It has been life altering for me, you know, gosh. Um, yeah. So, so important for us to do. And so important for us to really dedicate that time to ourselves. When we talk about self-care, um, we we're talking, Lacey, we're talking a little bit deeper. Uh, This is self-care. You know, Mm -hmm. when, when you are taking the time to define what success looks like for you, you are caring for yourself. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. And, and that's part of my journey because as you just said, you don't know what you don't know, but I mean, it ties right into the third value, but it's that I want to pay it forward because I know how liberating and freeing it is and peaceful it is to be able to know this information and to to take it in and live in my truth that I just want everybody else to have that experience and whatever it is that they're passionate about, but it's, it's, it is taking care of you. And, you know, people can't always understand that. I get a lot of questions like, well, well, what's your career? And I'm like, well, it's what I'm, I want to do when I want to do it. Or, um, you know, you could be, you could be making tons of money and I'm like, yeah, but at what cost I make you know, I want to do well and I want to help people. And so I I don't just not do it for the money, but I am doing it for intention and um, making a difference in people's lives. And that really comes again from, from my upbringing, I would have never had exposure to some of these thoughts and ideas, or even what I was capable of personally, because the goal success for my family was being the first one to graduate high school. And then that was it. And I didn't even know what I could do, my potential, none of that, because how could you know? And I think a lot of people go through life not really um, tuning into those things that are important to them or that they've naturally been good at. And that's, that's what actually step number two is recognizing your strengths to me, because when you can sit back and say, what what do I feel my best uh, doing? When am I my happiest? And not saying life is rainbow and sunshines, but when am I just naturally in that groove and I feel good and I'm, you know, just uh, cruise control and and things are happening. And that's your sweet spot. And that's when you know that you're operating probably in that arena that you're meant to be in. Yeah, I think I think of the question that a lot of people ask is if money wasn't an issue, what would you do with your time? You know, what would you do with your time? I think that's a really important question to dive in. Again, that costs you no money to, to just to just think about that, you know, write that down. Let's figure it out. And one of the things I like to share with people too is what are you doing? What activity are you doing while you're procrastinating from something you should be doing? You know, like what? Because I found myself in my craft room quite a bit procrastinating from doing other things I should be doing because it's going to advance my career. It's going to push me forward. It's going to. But yet I found such comfort and joy in, you know, creating and being creative. And I never gave that its due credit. I don't think, you know, that there's something to be said for that. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. So to kind of think that through. Um, So, yeah, I love this. So defining your values, um, recognizing what your strengths are. um, And that, you know, something, and I don't know if this is your third step, but I, I meant, uh, we were talking about something um, before, and that was investing in yourself. Um, Mm -hmm. And I I think that that attempt is accompanied by guilt a lot as well. Right. Yeah. Like why, you know, 
why should I be doing this? Or, you know, I have a, I have a current, currently have a friend who's kind of on the fence about taking steps to invest in herself because of the guilt associated with that. Like, what could you say to somebody uh, who's kind of struggling with that? Yeah, that comes up a lot because people get pulled in so many different directions or, you know, what other people need. Time is a big one, a constraint for people, money, et cetera. But, but it's what, for me, I, I like to ask, how can you better serve those people you're worried about now if you do take the time to invest in yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, how will you be better capable? And, and I often reference John Maxwell's lib principle, where if you cap out, you can't help people and they'll go somewhere else. They'll find somebody else or you'll lose your effectiveness. And so if you're not taking that time to invest in yourself, how are you then investing in those, those things right now that are taking priority? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, that, that's that's uh, I couldn't agree more. And I think that's probably the code I would really like to help people crack for themselves is what that looks like for themselves, because, you know, and, and there is a, you know, you can look at that from a mul multiple ways. You know, if you're talking about investing in yourself by getting a higher education or certifications or learning more things that might cost a little bit of money, um, you know, I've never regretted that. <laughs> Honestly, say I've never, ever regretted putting a little bit of that because the return on investment is plentiful. I'm not just talking about financial, yes. you know, that return on investment. I mean, and then you take it to the realm of your well-being, um, you know, your, uh, your physical health, your emotional health, the investment you're making in that, the, the um, two hour morning routine that I have now, which started off in two minutes you know, but that personal investment has paid dividends in how I show up for people, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you never know the opportunities you'll uncover if you do take that leap and invest in yourself. We were sharing beforehand a course that I took that just yesterday, I got to meet up with somebody from that course and, and that connection. So you never know what you might discover too, because there's no way I would have ever thought that I would be a, a Leader, leadership development trainer, a speaker, never. I failed speech. I failed the speech. We could take those tests, the CLEP tests yeah. in the room by myself because I was terrified, terrified, terrorized, any word, <laughs> wanted to throw up, blacked out, wrote my thing. It was a mess. And somebody uh, pushed me to do a, a position where I, I had to get up and speak and I started to get more comfortable and I would have never known that I could be capable of doing that had I not taken steps to try to grow or stretch myself and it changed my life and here I am. If you look at the in hindsight if you looked at the um, connectors between just just stepping out and just trying and then all the things that you know, the floodgates open and then all the things that come from that. It is such an amazing, magical thing. I don't, I don't mean to like be a sunshine pumper right now. <laughs> no, but that is what that the alchemist is about, right? Like when you listen to those voices and you take those steps, yes. the universe conspires to help you to achieve it. Yes. Yes. And I just, just give yourself a chance. Just I just give yourself a chance. Just, and, and that's why I, I know you and I both know we've lived the overwhelm. We know what it's like to be so tired at the end of the day. You have nothing left to give. You pass out on the couch at seven. Like we know that life. And if there's just anything I can say is just give yourself, just start with one minute a day, just to give to you you know, whatever that looks like and watch it snowball because it's new. Cause it'll be something new that creates new pathways, you know, in your, in your mind. So yeah, this is, this has been just like mic drop. I always say my mic is too big. Your mic is probably way too big to drop, but, <laughs> um, but Lacey, I have, I do have one question for you before we let you go. Um, you know, if there's, if there's something that our listeners, our viewers can take away in the way of, you know, defining success and what that can do for them, what would you want them to walk away with? I, I really want the listeners to consider, mm, this is a good question, because there's so many things, right? There's so many things I want people to walk away with. But what I think that uh, you 
create when you define success Mm -hmm. is that confidence, right? When you know what you're good at, you know why it's important and you know what matters to you, then you can walk with confidence and purpose and intention. And so if you're doubting yourself or you're feeling, you know, all of the things, then take that time, take that time to figure it out. So you you stop living up to everybody else's dreams and you can start living your life, your life, what you're meant to live. Okay. So thank you, Lacey, because you just said the word create, and that hits me in the soul when I hear that word, because we are all creators and we are creating and designing the life that we're living. So I so appreciate you for reaffirming that. So thank you for that. That's amazing. Um, okay, so before you go, I uh, want to let everybody know thing uh, the, the way to contact Lacey will be in the description box below. But Lacey, you are actively still taking clients, lucky us, right? So they can find you on website, LinkedIn. What, what do you think is the best way to contact you? Uh, LinkedIn has all of that information. So through LinkedIn, you can see, um, go to my website, see the different types of courses that I teach or what my coaching packages look like. And, and we were discussing it offline, but I'm excited because I'm launching in addition to coaching. um, What I find is a lot of people want to grow as leaders. And we've talked about how that helps you be a better human being, but through coaching, you'll also have access to a, a learning profile, a platform, a learning platform for leadership. So while coaching isn't the space for that, I want to help you to go through these steps that we've talked about in coaching. And then I want to give you tools to continue to succeed and grow as a human being. Um, But yes, I'm taking clients and, and really just passionate, passionate about helping people and helping you to feel your best and live your best life. Just enjoy life. That's really what, that's what it's about. Oh, I love that. And I can attest, um, Lacey is amazing at what she does um, because I tell you just the amount of um, how empathy that you have in our, just our normal conversations, our day-to-day conversations, but then the ability to kind of make me think about things differently. You just have such a gift. So definitely check out Lacey and connect with her elsewhere. So that'll all be below, but thank you so much, Lacey, for joining us and for sharing this hugely important conversation. I know it's going to help so many. Thank you for having me on. And I'm loving watching your journey and how you're impacting so many lives. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us for this conversation with Lacey. I hope you got as many takeaways as I know I did. Remember to give yourself a little bit of time to invest in finding out what some of those answers are that you've been looking for. And defining your own success, that really is key to help you stay on a trajectory and a pathway that's in alignment with your own values. So give yourself that time and space to figure that out. Everything will be listed below in the description box. You can check that out. Also, the book that we talked about, The Alchemist, will be linked if you wanna check it out. It's amazing. Thank you so much for being here. As always, be well and live well.